Listen up, all fight fans and fitness junkies. You've been listening to me talk about Jocko Fuel for a while now, and if you've been waiting, the wait is over. This August, you can score a massive 30% off on all of Jocko Fuel's top tier supplements. That's right, 30% off. Jocko Fuel is loaded with all of the good stuff and none of the bad. We're talking no added sugar, no artificial sweeteners, and absolutely no gray area or banned substances. Just pure, clean fuel to power your performances. And guys, I really want you to try some of my favorites like Jocko Go and Jocko Hydrate. This deal is only going to be available for the month of August. So use code CHAIL30 or go to JockoFuel.com. Don't wait. Fuel up with Jocko Fuel and crush your goals. Guys, click on the link below to make it happen. Drink his Duplass East coach, uses a cattle prod, in practice, and zaps athletes that are doing a technique wrong. Did you guys see the headline? Very good coach, very successful. He's, he's got a world champion. He uses a cattle prod. To show his athletes if they're doing something wrong. What do you guys think? I mean, what do you think about that? Kerry Kolot's father used to do this very thing, and Kerry Kolot talked about it. And Kerry's relationship with his father stayed intact. It was just fine. But Kerry spoke to that very point and said, if you're going to do that, you got to have the right kid. That was Kerry's exact words. You have to have the right kid. You cannot just go around with a cattle prod, and then when practice ends, act, get in the car and drive home together and act like everything is fine. It was, it was a very compelling statement. And Dreykus' coach uses a cattle prod. Do you believe it? I mean, it's, it's one of those things where we have to start with that. Like, it, it, it's so unbelievable what I'm witnessing that I'm questioning if that was theatrics. I'm questioning that. It is a very tough thing just on its surface, like this big, beautiful sport that we have. If you bring it down to, to a smallest denominator, that's the practice room. That is the gyms and the clubs and the groups of people that get together, set a couple of hours a day aside to work on this goal and you build your way up. And it would be a very difficult thing to get somebody to pay you. To, to pay gym dues every month, to get somebody's parents to pay the gym dues knowing I'm dropping my child off to be punched and kicked. I'll pick him up in two hours and I'll pay you every 30 days, right? I mean, just, just like conceptually, the gym bought business is a very difficult one. And now you involve electrocution. And I'm just wondering, do I believe that that happened? Do I believe that that's real? Do I believe that that wasn't just somehow theatrics for television? But it's a very weird concept. Like, what is so hard to believe that somebody's going to have a, a, a caliper that zaps somebody? What, what, what is so hard to believe after you've already explained that you're paying monthly dues to a coach to enforce upon you in the best of situations that you're going to be punched and kicked about the head, face, check and, chest and neck, right? I mean, it's, it's one of those things where the, it's hard enough. It's hard enough to believe that these gyms even stay open. I remember Team Quest when I started, it was, but it was at a car line. It wasn't a gym. It couldn't be a gym. There would be no way that anybody could organize a gym and bring in enough revenue to pay the lease each month, to, to pay to keep the lights on. To pay for, for, for somebody to have running water so that they could use a bathroom and or use a shower after the workout. Like, this was not realistic. So we were in the back of a car lot, but everybody was. Everybody was in their garage. They were in their living room, and they moved the coffee table out of the way. It wasn't until well after 2001 when the first gym opened up that was doing something called mixed martial arts. Before then, you get a boxing workout over here, and you get a wrestling workout on this day. You and your buddy get a DVD, and you try something called an arm bar. It was just a very different time. So do I believe? I'm well aware that we've evolved. I'm well aware that the, the, this little niche sport is now mainstream. This small fringe thing that was only a dream can now produce a living for certain people. I'm, I'm well aware of that. But do I believe that we have grown to the extent 
that you could use a cattle prod and get anybody to come back. Uh, it's, it's a tough one for me, right? And if you had the backstory, which is, hey, man, that thing looks really scary and it's really not. It makes a noise and there's this little electric. It, it, it really doesn't feel very bad. Like, like, even if you had that backstory. I don't know from a marketing standpoint, just conceptually, if you could get anybody to walk through that door. Hey, guys, I want to train here. Hey, I want to I want to come in here. I heard you do great things. I heard you produce UFC champions. I heard you shock people with cattle prods. Like, I'm, I'm just not seeing. I'm not seeing how that all ties in. And I'm very curious about this, by the way. Like, this is a top coach. This is a coach who has a world champion. There aren't very many of those. There are not very many of those guys walking around. Now you got to have training partners for him. And all the, what's the training partner get? To be punched in the head and face and kicked in the legs all day, right? It's, it's one of these, it's an interesting spot. I don't know. I, I don't know. Would that work? Would that work with you? What kind of person are you? Would you giggle? Would you think that was funny? Because at some point you're going to do a technique wrong, right? I mean, you have to. Just conceptually, you have to. If the person that does a move wrong gets zapped and you don't get zapped, by default, it would mean that you didn't do anything wrong. Well, if you didn't do anything wrong, then you don't need him training you in the first place. Like it sounds, it sounds like you got it all figured out. And meanwhile, if you are getting things wrong and you're getting zapped, is it a fatigue issue? Is it a technique issue? Is it just that your opponent did it, did it better? It starts to get a little bit philosophical as to why am I getting zapped and this guy isn't getting zapped. Is it a cool thing? Is it something that people find interesting? I've seen punishments in practice, and we never called them punishments. We called it discipline. But it was in the form of push-ups, and it was right then. Hey, you, got your hands down, you're resting, got your elbows on your knees, 25. It was, it was a situation like this. But if you were to remove that, if you were to remove the walls, if you were to remove the sport, and somebody did that, you're outside, you're at the shopping mall, you're in a parking lot. And you told somebody to get down and do 25 push-ups. As much as that might stand out, we do not have a crime taking place. If you took down the walls and you took down the sport and you're in the supermarket or you're in the park, right? Somebody comes up with a cattle prod. It's a very fascinating topic to me. There is, there's so many things that, that take place in fighting and take place in sport where you combine those two. Like, for example... The sport of hockey that people will swear to you that they love, they don't. You start quite, why, why do you like hockey? What's so fun about it? Why are you watching this game? Why did you enjoy last night's game? Every, every time, and I do mean 100% of the time, it's because a fight broke out or they think that a fight might break out. And that's always peculiar to me. I, I mean, stock, hockey would sell out arenas thinking that maybe a fight would break out. They'd be so excited when it did. And I'm kind of going, hey, why don't you go to a martial arts event? Like for sure, that very fight that you're hoping that you're watching painfully, painfully, as guys are skating around the eye, moving this butt, painfully watching, hoping a fight will break out. If you go to a UFC or an MMA event, for sure it will. But it didn't work that way. There's something about a fight breaking out where it's not supposed to break out that's very compelling, where they clear the bench. They clear the bench in baseball. I mean, it is the highest rated of, of any baseball event you could get. More people watch a highlight of the benches clearing and coming onto the field than they would a grand slam home run. There's something about when it's not supposed to happen, that it, but it does. And I've never understood how in hockey, when guys start playing, or they, clear their goal, or they start beating each other up, I've never understood how nothing happens. That's a crime. There's police there. Why are they not arresting them? I mean, I, I have, I've legitimately wondered that. And the police and the announcers and everybody else will default to, well, that's hockey. And the referee will get involved when he's ready. And if he sent him to the box, then that's the end of it. And I'm always thinking, no, no, it's not. That's a crime. It's not within the rules. That's against the law. But there's something about when it's a sporting event that it doesn't count. It's, it's not applied the same. It's a very curious question for me. I saw the video. I saw the video. I saw the cattle prog. I heard the coach say that he would use it. I saw all of those things, but do I believe it? Would it work with you? And then think about it the other way too, not just as the athlete. If you were the coach and you had a pupil that wasn't doing a technique the way you thought was best, would you, as a matter of discipline, use the cattle prod on them? 
it's it's very interesting. It's a tough business model. But I imagine it's very tough to create a world champion. And he was able to do that. So we will leave this in the hands of the jury.